Hey guys, Michael the DC Multiverse Collector here, bringing you this review of the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Gold Label Crisis on Infinite Earths Build-A-Figure Wave. Now before we get into our review proper, I just want to apologise for a couple of things. First, for my prolonged absence without any reviews, and second, for the terrible, terrible sound of my voice. Now, both of these are related. Um, I went to a Taylor Swift Eras Tour concert a few weeks back, and I'm pretty sure I caught COVID, and it's been battering me around ever since. My voice is destroyed. I've been coughing and spluttering, and I've just not felt up to reviewing anything, and my voice has been so bad. But here I am. I'm going to try and rough it. Uh, to bring you this review of this wave. Uh, this is a really interesting wave in a number of respects. Um, now, I imported this from the McFarlane Toy Store in the United States, paid all that shipping to get it shipped to Australia, wasn't cheap, and as we all know, this was not a cheap wave to begin with. Now, in the United States, these figures retailed for 40 US dollars each. Now I bought the bundle and if you bundle them all together there was a saving and if you added the 15% off code that was active at the time I purchased them that brought the cost down to actually quite a reasonable cost. So I think if you were in the US and you ordered these four together, used the codes, the cost is not ridiculous. Of course the shipping to Australia made it uh, very very expensive but I really wanted to have a look at this wave. Now for all my Australian viewers rest assured this wave is actually being released locally in Australia in or around June and from my understanding it's not actually going to be as disproportionately expensive in Australia as it was in the United States. So I think um, before we get stuck into the review I just want to talk about the price in a little bit more detail because once we talk about it I never want to refer to the price again. So we all know this is probably the most expensive wave McFarlane has ever released, particularly just for a BAF wave. 40 US dollars a figure is, is a lot of money, let's not beat around the bush, it's been spoken about to death. It's too much money, it's a lot of money and are these figures objectively worth it? Um, now, without even commenting on the specific qualities of each figure, I can tell you these aren't 40 US dollar figures, you know, in terms of their accessories or their paint. They're just objectively not worth it. But I'm not going to sort of hold that against these figures. And let me tell you why. It's because the value of the dollar to each consumer is going to be different. There are going to be people with lots of disposable income and a passion for collecting who buy these no matter what. They don't really care about the cost. They just want to hear about the figures. There'll be other people who will buy them on sale or second hand, or there'll be people in regions where this wave is not as expensive. So in Australia, this is going to be more reasonably priced, is my understanding, at least compared to a regular builder figure figure, it's not going to be such a leap. So price is going to be one of those things that varies on the context of the buyer. So I'm just going to make the comment, this is a very, very expensive wave. I don't think the figures objectively in terms of their intrinsic qualities are worth that amount of money. But this review today is not going to be talking about the money anymore. That point's been made, each of you will make your own assessment. I'm just going to review these figures like any other wave of figures. And another reason I'm going to do that is because I believe that the pricing of this wave was an aberration. I don't believe this is indicative pricing of builder figure waves moving forward. I've done a video on this. I think this was the Target exclusive wave um, that uh, Target didn't pick up. Um, and so McFarlane had to find an alternative distribution model and they did it through their website and there were probably sort of minimum order quantities involved and I just think that this is a, I'm not going to call it a screw up wave, I'm just going to call it a, an aberration wave. So for all those reasons, that will be the last time I mention price in this review. So let's look at the figures. First up, you'll see on the left we've got Kid Flash, then you'll see we have the Psycho Pirate, we have then the Spectre, probably the one I'm looking forward to the most in this wave. And finally, we've got Kal-El, Superman of Earth 2. And you'll see we've got our Build-A-Figure monitor, which I'm really interested to see how that comes together. So, without any further ado, let's open these guys up one at a time and see how cool they really are. Okay, let's start with Wally West, the Kid Flash. This is the first figure out of four, at least by the numbering on the box. It's also the dud of the wave, the undisputed dud of the wave. Now, it's not to say I hate the figure, but there's a lot to talk about, and I'm going to try and whiz through it really quickly. So let's start with the accessories. We get absolutely no speed force effects, but we do get 
a display stand and we do get a collector card. Here you'll see that very, very nice art and on the back, a bio for Wally West. In terms of more substantial accessories, we get the monitor legs. You'll see they have that nice texture to them like a lot of the Green Lantern figures that we've got recently, gold plastic for the boots. They are not very tall, but uh, we'll see how that figure comes together when we build him at the end. In terms of other accessories, we get some alternate hands. You'll see we get some sort of running gesture hands like that and he comes with some fist hands and as has been well publicized these fist hands are tiny all the hands are tiny they are disproportionately small i have zero idea what happened here in terms of quality control but this fist in particular looks like a tiny little baby hand it is absolutely ridiculous now that to me just shouldn't happen. There's a quality control issue or something, you know, I don't know. Someone should get a, a stern caution or a reprimand for letting that slip through the production. I don't understand what happened. I've seen people swap the hands in from Red Tornado and they seem to fit okay. Um, I think I will probably just put one of the running gesture hands here and maybe pose it in a way where perspective makes it sort of make sense that it's so small. But yeah, absolutely bizarre in terms of proportions of those hands. What else kind of do I and don't I like about this figure? Uh, the colors, I'm having trouble with these colors. Um, they're sort of comic accurate. I mean, particularly if you sort of compare them to the reference material, I suppose the red is a kind of lighter red, but is that just the lighting? In any event, I just don't think it quite works. The red is kind of this insipid kind of, I don't know, not quite ketchup red, but it just seems very cheap and very flat. And the yellow for me is just off. It's like mustard on a hot dog. That's all I can think. He just looks like a hot dog with mustard and ketchup. And I just don't like it. Something else, the plastic sort of has this sort of semi-gloss to it. Um, which just sometimes you'll see the figures have that. Sometimes they're a bit more matte. I tend to like the figures McFarlane does with a bit more texture, which really takes that sort of cheap look away. You'll look at things like his boots. Now these are just you know additions to the Blue Beetle body, which we've seen this Blue Beetle body a million times. But um, you know the additions they've made, like these boots, they are just super flat. Like there is nothing going on in terms of detail here. It's got the wings, which is nice but um, that just feels like solid, cheap, chunky plastic. Now those little uh, glove pieces here, very similar to the ones that Riddler came with, who also was on this body, but even those had a bit more sculpt to them. These are just chunks of plastic and it's just flat. So overall, this figure is just flat. He just doesn't pop. He's, um, there's not much detail on him. His proportions are wonky. Um, at least the Flash, Kid Flash symbol is sort of really nicely painted on. It's not sculpted, but it's clean. You know, I'll give them that. It's very, very clean. The head sculpt itself is actually not too bad. I like the skin tone and I actually like the hair quite a bit. Uh, I will say though that I find the mask details a little bit soft. I will also say that these wings here are so delicate, like the piece of plastic that attaches these is so thin and so slight that if you are rough with this, they will snap off. So be very, very careful if you get this figure not to break his wings. Now, I just wanna bring in by way of comparison, the closest comparison I have, which is the Flashpoint Barry Allen. These both use the exact same body, but I think you'll agree that Barry looks a hundred times better. His colors are better. You'll see that his boots here actually have some sculpted detail at the bottom there, which sort of makes them look a bit more like fabric rather than a chunk of plastic. He's got some extra paint apps. Um, he just pops way more. The head sculpt is superior. It's just a better figure overall. Um, I will say that generally these two figures actually go quite well together in terms of their art style. So if you're looking to sort of build like a, a classic looking Wally West and Barry Allen, these two go together really, really well. I just want to bring in the Rebirth Wally West, which is my favorite Wally West figure. And you'll see these are completely different art styles, obviously. Uh, this is much more modern, but I really like this look a whole lot better. And you'll see that he's just covered from head to toe in texture and paint, and he just looks so much more dynamic. And uh, I think he just looks like a better collectible, a better figure overall. So um, if you need a Wally West in your collection, I say go this one. But if you're looking for a figure to pose with your Flashpoint Flash, uh, Barry, you know, I think, yeah, 
Though those two look quite good together. Moving on to the second figure in the wave, I'm very excited to look at the Psycho Pirate, who I think might be my favorite of the wave. Let's reserve judgment, but first impressions are this guy's really, really cool. So first up, we get the display base. No one cares about that. We also get the torso for the monitor, which looks pretty, pretty nice. This is cast in sort of a silvery plastic. It's very, very soft. Not a lot of painted detail, but we'll come to that when we assemble the builder figure. We also get the display card. Here you'll see Flash with the Psycho Pirate. And on the back, you will see the Roger Hayden uh, data file. Now, Psycho Pirate is a really interesting character, a super villain who sort of uh, can project emotions onto others and manipulate emotions. Uh, there are multiple versions of Psycho Pirate. This is the Roger Hayden Psycho Pirate, and his prominence in the Crisis on Infinite Earth storyline is really interesting. Um, starts off recruited by the Monitor, gets abducted by the Anti Monitor, switches sides, um, and when the whole crisis is resolved, uh, Psycho Pirate is the only one of the only ones who has memory of the events uh, of that crossover event and he's driven mad in Arkham Asylum. A really, really interesting minor character. Can I just say I love that Todd McFarlane is giving us characters like Psycho Pirate. You can pick on him all you want for his endless um, releases of different variants of Batman, which I love by the way, but you know, that's a valid criticism for some. Um, but you know, if you really open your eyes and look at what he's doing, um, he's already filling out the ranks with characters like Psycho Pirate, and um, that keeps the line interesting and fresh. And, you know, in a wave where we're getting sort of a Flash figure and a Superman figure, I just think it's really rad to get a character like Psycho Pirate, who none of us would have expected. Um, you don't get figures of Psycho Pirate coming along very often, so this is really, really cool. Now, this figure is using the Blue Beetle Booster Gold body buck we've seen a million times, but there are some big, big changes. Of course, the way the cape sits on here is different from any other Blue Beetle Booster Gold figure. I don't know that we've actually had uh, this buck with a cape before. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is the first use of this buck with a cape. Secondly, um, I believe that the lower torso might be the Blue Beetle, but the upper torso is completely unique. Let's bring in Barry Allen Flash again and have a look, and you will see that they have different sculpt. Psycho Pirates is flatter, maybe a little broader, whereas Barry's a bit narrower, and you see the more defined pectoral muscles. Yeah, this is just definitely a different uh, sculpt. You'll see the way it's cut there is different, so, you know, it's interesting. Todd can swap around pieces and modify sculpts when he chooses to. He just doesn't always choose to. Really, really interesting. In terms of the aesthetics of this guy, um, I think at a distance he looks really, really good. Um, the colors are fairly nice. Um, the paintwork, sort of from a distance, is really, really clean. You get up close and it gets a little bit muddy, but you know, I'm not going to complain. It's it's maybe not as uh, good as it could have been, but it's it's better than it could have been as well. So I think it looks really, really nice. One thing I will say is that these emotional, sorry, these uh, mask emotions painted on his chest have a digitized look. I'm not sure if that shows up on camera, but they almost look pixelated, which is sort of rare. You don't see that very often. Um, the topography that Todd uses is usually pretty clean and pretty good. Uh, another thing you'll notice is that when you articulate him back like that, the black doesn't sort of, you know, continue up there. So you get that broken up a bit, but that's minor. I, I doubt you'd be posing him like that very much anyway. But yeah, by and large, this is a good looking figure. The diaper piece is unique with that belt. Um, I have seen some people criticize the fact that there's no paint on the back, but I just think that's insane because you never see it. Would it be better if there was appropriate paint on the back? Yes, but for 99.99% of us, we're going to be posing him facing forward like this. And on that basis, he looks great. Um, and I just... I just don't see why you would complain about it, honestly. Uh, the cape itself looks like a unique sculpt. I've never seen this sculpt before, certainly not this collar. It's made of a very, very soft plastic that smells terrific. No, seriously, if you have this figure, smell the cape. You'll be high, um, you know, high as a kite. Anyway, it smells great. It feels really nice. It's good for toy photography because it's so pliable. I will say it kind of looks a little bit glossy and cheap. There's no texture to it, but... It's not a big deal. Another thing I really, really like is the head sculpt. That gold paint looks great. 
See how much better paint looks than gold plastic? That looks awesome. The eyes are super cleanly painted. The gold's clean. This gold piece is actually a separate piece glued on the front and it just gives it some depth. So it's not just painted on, it's actually a sculpt. I love it. I think that looks great. Would it have been nice to have an alternate head sculpt without sort of the mask on? Yes, yes it would. Some accessories would have gone uh, down really well as well. But like overall, if you just put this guy on the shelf, I just think he looks really, really cool. And he's such a unique sort of villain to have on your shelf. And I, I like his cape. I like his sort of fist hands. Yeah, this is, this is a really, really nice figure. Pretty cool. Really, really liking Psycho Pirate. Coming up next is the Spectre, Jim Corrigan, the third figure in the wave, the one that I was the most excited for. I think overall, Todd McFarlane has delivered, but before we get to that, let's look at the accessories. You'll see we get the display base, nobody cares. You'll see that we get the card, with some very, very nice art of the Spectre, and the data file for Jim Corrigan on the back. You can pause it if you want to have a look. We also get the builder figure parts. So we get this sort of uh, cape piece. You'll see it's got that beautiful texture all over it. Very soft plastic here. And we get the head of the monitor, which is absolutely hideous. And I mean that in a complimentary way. It, it sort of does justice to the sort of ugly look of the character. We'll have a look at that in more detail when we build him. In terms of the Spectre himself, from what I can tell, this is a really clever mixture of old parts and new parts. Of course, this is heavily based on the Martian Manhunter figure that's been kicking around for a couple of years. You will see that the torso is largely the same, the diaper piece is new, the upper legs are the same, uh, the lower leg pieces on the Spectre are new, um, but his actual feet are the same. So his feet are the same, but his lower leg and sort of like a sock there, a new reuse, new reuse. His arms are reused. Of course, he has his own gloves though. And you'll see that the upper torso has been modified to sort of have this cape on it, which is completely different uh, from Martian Manhunter. And of course, the head sculpt is completely different. So this, in my opinion, this is how you do reuse because you're using existing parts that fit and make sense, but you're substituting in new parts to do justice to your new design. So more of this McFarlane, uh, you know, smart reuse, I've got no problem with it if it gets us characters like the Spectre. Of course, one of the legacy issues in reusing Martian Manhunter as a base body for this guy is that he's really, really short. So Martian Manhunter has always been really, really short. Uh, it's one of the flaws of that figure. And you know, if I bring in Hush Batman, one of the tallest figures next to the Spectre, he towers over him and it looks a little bit strange. So that is a slight flaw with this figure, I think. He is slightly underscaled, only a little bit though. And I have seen people substitute a different neck peg in uh, and sort of do other things that sort of give him a little bit of extra height. I don't think I will bother. I think this guy is probably okay, depending on who you pose him next to, of course. If you pose him next to really tall figures, he will look minuscule. But on his own, next to the appropriate figures, he looks tremendous. I really love the colors, the gray, the dark green. I think Todd has nailed that general look of the Spectre. I think the head sculpt is really nice. Let's just have a look at it. It's got that shadowing around the eyes. And of course, the sculpt of the actual head looks great. It's important to note the head is sort of uh, sitting independent of the hood. So you can sort of swivel it around to get different looks, but the hood won't travel with the head. So if you tilt his head to the side, it goes a bit sort of out of alignment so you kind of just have to finagle it a bit to where it looks good but uh yeah generally looks really really nice i like the sculpted detail around the cape i like the sculpt in the diaper piece it's got a nice texture to it and it's got those crease lines which look really really nice and just like martian manhunter he's got this like really nice texture all over his sort of suit here really brings the sculpt to life and you know, if I compare that to the Kid Flash figure that I reviewed first, where it was just flat plastic, this just looks so much more multi-dimensional, so much more realistic, so much more high-end. So this is definitely a superior figure to that one in many, many ways. I do like the gloves. They've been sculpted really, really nicely. And I do like the boots. They've got these little, uh, I don't know what you call them, you know, 
sock parts, the, the top of the boot. What am I talking about, guys? Uh, and of course, just like Martian Manhunter, that really nice texture on the shoe itself. So coming around here, you'll see at the back of the cape, we have some paint application of sort of the dark shadowing and the stars at the back. It's a weird looking effect. Like it kind of looks like someone has Monica lewinsky this guy. I get what they were going for. I, I think it's generally pretty, pretty good. The cape itself is soft and pliable. It's got a great look to it, really nice sculpted design, but you'll see it's got a, it's kind of a very dramatic look. Now I know a lot of people will hate that. They like more neutral capes. Uh, particularly toy photographers who want to do some more sort of uh, posing. This is sort of quite a limited figure in terms of what you're going to get him to do with this cape. And I wonder if this would have been a good figure to actually give a wired cloth cape um, instead of this very dramatic, very flowy sculpt. Now for me, who tends to just pose his figures like statues on the shelf, uh, I think this guy looks really great, really dramatic, uh, really sort of cinematic looking. I really, really like it. So look, what can I say? The Spectre, uh, it's the figure I wanted most out of all four and largely he delivers. I'm pretty, pretty happy with this guy and I think you will be too. So rounding out the wave is the fourth figure, Cal L, K-A-L-L, Superman of Earth 2. Now this is a figure that I was perhaps not super excited about but really curious about because this is a really notable figure in a number of ways now before we break down what's so sort of fascinating and uh, notable about this figure let's look at the accessories you'll see we get the display stands that I've used to prop him up we also get the data file here you'll see the art of Superman of Earth 2 and the Cal L data file at the back. Now, my understanding of how this works, now correct me if I'm wrong, DC Geeks, is that Cal L from Earth 2 is sort of the Golden Age Superman. So the original Golden Age Superman um, was sort of retconned subsequently so that he is actually a different universe than the Silver Age Superman, and that's how they kind of reconcile uh, being these two, two versions of Supermans kind of existing in different continuities. So they turn the Golden Age Superman into Superman of Earth 2. Have I got that right? Someone help me. So he's a distinct entity. It's why he looks older. He's got the gray hair, uh, the lighter color scheme, the more classic look. Before we get to that, let's finish out the accessories. You will see he comes with the monitor's arms, there they are, same textured look. We'll look at those more when we build the figure. And you will see here we have uh, two gesture hands. In addition to the fists that he comes with, he comes with these very, very large, very expressive gesture hands, which I think are quite good. Something this figure does not come with is a display stand, uh, sorry, a flight display stand, which given uh, some of the features we'll talk about later, and particularly his cape, I think it's insane that this figure doesn't have a flight stand. Like, it's just, it's bananas. But anyway, let's look at the figure itself. Why is this figure so notable, so important? Well, there are a couple of things. First up, this is a brand new Superman buck, and we don't get these very often. So originally we had, let's just go on a little history lesson. We have the Action Comics 1000 Superman buck. That's the first Superman we ever got from McFarlane. And very soon after we got the Infected Superman. Now I don't have that figure, but we've had a zillion figures using the Infected Superman buck, like this one. And uh, we've also had Page Punches Superman, which I don't have to hand right now, but that's popped up a couple of times with the classic Superman, Page Punches Superman. They use the same leaner body. And that's basically like the three main Superman bodies that we just see over and over and over and over ad nauseam. So finally, we are getting a unique Superman body. Oh, sorry, I actually forgot. We also get the Dark Knight Returns Superman, Chad Superman. I'm not going to pull him off the shelf, but that's the ultra steroid looking uh, Frank Miller design, uh, looking body. So it's kind of like four bodies, largely, that get reused a million times. Now we have a newer body that is taller. It is um, sort of more lean, but not too skinny. Uh, it's a really good looking body in my opinion. And so finally we have a Superman that is tall enough to stand next to some of the taller Batman figures and actually look really, really nice. So uh, big fan of the proportions of this body in general. He's not super steroided out. He does have that sort of golden age look where he's big, but not huge. Really reminds me of Christopher Reeve. 
Um, you know, also with the colors being this sort of more muted look, um, I think he looks really, really nice. He gives sort of classic retro vibes. And if you kind of consider, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong guys, but aren't these two figures really depicting the same guy? Like this is first appearance Superman, although with the red boots, it's more like Superman number one. And this is Kal-El, Superman of Earth two. These are the same guy, like in continuity, aren't they? Have I got that right? But if you look at them both together, this guy just gives me all those sort of golden age vibes, much more so than this. I have seen people take this head, put it on that body um, to create sort of a classic uh, golden age Superman. I kind of like this older head, I'm gonna keep it, but you can see how that would work. But just look at the proportions, look how much more heroic this guy looks. Uh, more golden age too, sort of the, the, the gentle musculature as opposed to that sort of steroidy, um, musculature with all the like wrinkles and details this to me if you're looking for a classic looking like golden age superman this to me is the one without a doubt uh, proportionately color wise um, yeah this is the one uh, you'll see that the emblem on the front is painted it's not sculpted I think that's okay it, it looks quite nice the belt is painted the red uh, paint on the belt notches is really messy Actually, no, it's not red paint. It's yellow paint on a red diaper. The yellow paint, the way it's been applied is really, really messy. And of course, this has been noted by others. The paint does not continue around the back of the diaper, which is really, really lame. You don't see it that often, but when you move the cape, you can see it. And I think that sucks. Um, I promised I wasn't gonna bring price into this, but I think no matter what the price is, whether it's 20 bucks or 40 bucks, whatever, you should just do the bare minimum in terms of paint that's unfinished and it's it's not good enough and um, I don't support it but otherwise like look at this body like this is the first new Superman body I've held in a long time that sounds really weird but it is I haven't touched a new Superman mold for what feels like years you know it feels like two years since a new Superman body buck and this one seems to be a good one I, I really like it it doesn't it has not much forward ab crunch bends backward really nice it does everything you'd expect I'm not gonna go through the articulation here, even though it is a new sculpt. It does, oh, so stiff, but it does everything you'd expect it to do. Has an ask continuity rating of nine out of 10. With that soft diaper, looks really good. And I think this will do just about anything you wanna do. That's got the rock, the hinge, the pivot at the feet, standard sculpted McFarlane wrist joints. Yeah, it's, it's a nice buck. Um, I can't really complain. I like the gentle sort of sculpted wrinkles there. Um, if there's any reuse on this guy, will you let me know if you notice? I think he's largely new. One thing I will say is that the way that the neck is attached to the body is a little bit messy. There's a bit of gap there, which doesn't look that attractive, but at a distance, you won't notice. Now, the other way in which this is a really notable figure is the fact that this is the first figure to have a wide cape. Now, since this figure was released and announced and everything, we've got other figures with wide capes. There's the Christian Bale skydive Batman. Um, we also have the Cassandra Kane Batgirl. So there's more wide capes on the way. This, I believe, is the first one um, technically to be announced. Um, and it's also notable that this figure has an emblem on the back of the cape, which we don't often see. So to have a wired cloth cape with an emblem just feels quite monumental to me. Like. Um, what is Todd doing? Um, in all seriousness though, I do like the experimental nature of this figure. You can tell Todd is really trying for something here, um, you know? And I, I think when you're dealing with a character like Superman, um, I think a wide cape just makes sense because you can just get him into so many more dynamic poses. Now, I'm a terrible poser. I, I'm not good at this sort of thing, but if you are, you're gonna be able to do some really fun stuff. And I mean, the material isn't the highest quality, but you know, it's it's decent, like it's not terrible. It does what it's meant to do. The wire seems to work. You'd be able to do some really fun stuff with this if you are talented. I mean, I can just get him into a sort of a fairly basic pose with his knee raised like he's flying. You can spread his cape out like this. I mean, you can have a lot of fun with this. Like this is really playable, really fun, really poseable. That head sculpt, 
it's an acquired taste. Like they've gone for a sort of an older Clark. I actually think it's it's quite good. But if you don't like it, there's a million other head swaps you could do. Uh, like I said, that first appearance Superman would work really well. I like this one. I'm going to keep it. And overall, like this is fun. Like this is dynamic. This has possibilities. And that's what I like about it. So while it's not the highest quality cloth cape I've ever seen or wired cape, um, I think if this is a sign of things to come, the Batman that we've got, this Christian Bale one, uh, Cassandra came Batgirl, I'm all for it. I think this creates a lot of playability, a lot of poseability, um, maybe not durability. We're going to have to be careful with these things, see how they hold up over time. But yeah, overall, really interesting figure and one that's a lot of fun in, and sort of notable in a lot of ways. So um, not perfect, but probably a must buy just for sort of some of these more interesting details. And last but not least, let's have a look at the Builder Figure Monitor. Now, right off the bat, I can tell you this figure is mostly unique sculpting, so that's really nice. He was also a joy to put together. There was no frustration, everything popped in uh, like you would expect. It was very simple, very intuitive, so no complaints there. And um, that's actually quite nice because as you and I both know, if you've been collecting DC Multiverse for any length of time, there are some builder figures in this line that have been a nightmare to put together. <clears throat> Bane. Um, anyway, this guy goes together really nicely. He's unique sculpt uh, from top to bottom, as far as I can see, which is really nice. Right off the bat though, I will say he's quite small. So he's more in line with that Mr. Freeze builder figure that we've got uh, previously, the Bane from the Dark Knight builder figure. These are just regular seven inch figures. Like to show you, here you have Hush Batman, who is taller. Uh, so he's, he's very, very modestly sized. I think he's a little bit undersized um, compared to sort of how big he's meant to be in the source material. And I just think in terms of the value for money, uh, you know, I just like my builder figures to be a little bit bigger. So for example, let's bring in the Beast Boy figure from the Beast Boy Titans builder figure wave. You can't even see his head. That's how much beefier and bigger and more substantial he was. So think about the value you're getting when you buy a wave of four and you end up with like a figure this big compared to when you sort of end up with, you know, a builder figure like that. And then you bring in the Anti-Monitor who is also undersized uh, and you'll see that he's still way bigger than the monitor and if you ask me the way to have done this wave would have been to have a wave of four get rid of kid flash put the monitor in as one of the four main figures in the wave and the builder figure should have been this guy right here who is perfect builder figure size that should have been the way it was but let's not sort of focus on the past let's focus on what we actually have i shouldn't say the past i should say let's not focus on what we don't have let's focus on what we do have and that is a very fine looking monitor figure i think the head sculpt looks good the paint looks good i like the sort of gold uh, brushing around the pauldrons there looks really nice i think that the hot pink cape with that texture looks great texture on all sides detail around the back I think the detail on the boots and the gloves and the gauntlets all looks really, really good. He's not overly painted, but what's there looks really nice. All the color choices are good. I think this gold plastic is a bit cheap looking. I wish it was painted, but it is what it is. An interesting thing about my figure, and I'm curious, let me know in the comments if this has happened to you. My monitor has two left feet. So he's very, very hard to stand up, which is why I stole a display stand from another figure um, just to get him to stand. I'm not sure if that's just a, uh, an error across the board or if I've just got like a, a lemon, but you know, it's not a huge deal. It looks a little bit weird, but I'm not going to get too fussy about it. But uh, yeah, let me know if your monitor has two left feet. Overall, in terms of a builder figure, I think this is one of the weakest that we've had, but it does not mean that it's bad. It's actually a good figure. I'm glad to have the monitor. I just don't think this is a builder figure. Personally, I think he's just a regular figure, but i um, glad to get him and for what he is, he's pretty good. So there you have it. So here is the wave all together. And I think if you look at this wave as a whole, it's actually really, really solid. It came under a lot of criticism when it was announced, and for good reason. The price was outrageous for what you get, but putting the price aside, like just divorce it from the price, the figures in this wave are really cool. I like the figure selection a lot, 
barring Kid Flash, and I think each of these figures is really, really good, barring Kid Flash. So there, he is the obvious dud of this wave, and I think, um, you know, it, something else should have gone in his place or they should have just executed on him better but besides that i think that the kal-el superman of earth 2 is a really really cool figure and quite a landmark figure in this line in a number of ways so i like him quite a lot i think the specter and psycho pirate are both the standouts in terms of just execution on a on a design they both look really really good and they both sorely needed characters for our dc world so really happy to get those um, yeah, stoked. Kid Flash is a dud. We've been through that already. But if you buy Kid Flash, you do get the Monitor, who is a pretty good figure. If he was a 7-inch figure, I'd be lukewarm to positive on him. You know, I'd hope he'd come with a few accessories, but, you know, it is what it is. As a builder figure, he's just okay. So overall, I think this wave is rock solid. I think three of the figures here are kind of must-haves. Two of them, Monitor and Kid Flash, you know, they're all right. Kid Flash... Mm, not so much. So, um, overall, really happy to have got this wave in. I paid a pretty penny for it, and I don't regret it. And um, I think if you just focus on the figures you want the most, you'll be really happy, particularly if you get Spectre and Psycho Pirate. Anyway, that's all from me. I hope this review has been informative, helpful, entertaining, any of that. If it has been, why not give me a like? And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. So many of you watch my videos and don't subscribe, and of course, that's your choice. I'm not going to beg you to subscribe, but hey, you know, consider it because it's, it's really helpful for my channel and I appreciate it a lot. Anyway, that's all from me for the time being. I'm going to work on getting my voice back, bring you some more reviews, and uh, I look forward to speaking to you guys again in the future. In the meantime, happy collecting. Thanks so much for watching. This video was brought to you with the support of Fett's Hideout Toys and Collectibles. For a great range of toys from DC Multiverse to Black Series to Marvel Legends, Hot Toys and more, uh, visit Fett's Hideout Toys and Collectibles and use the offer code DCDUDE. That's DCDUDE uh, for an exclusive discount month to month. Could be 5% off or $5 off at checkout. Try the code, see what you get, place an order with FETS and you won't be disappointed. And we thank FETS for their continued support of this channel.